Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the same quality, construction, and detail which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the ultra premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Nea, and Baracoa. Duran Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach as all tobacco is grown in their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Experience the world through the eyes of an icon with the new Macanudo Inspirado line. Created for a global palate, Macanudo Inspirado defies convention. Handcrafted with the world's finest tobaccos, Inspirado delivers a unique international smoking experience. Find Inspirado Orange at fine tobaccos everywhere and Inspirado Black online and in your favorite catalogs. Ready to be inspired? Check out Macanudo Inspirado now at macanudo.com. CAO has brought you iconic cigars over the years. Brazilian, Italian, La Traviata, done in a playful nature with a unique twist. Travel to the exciting world of CAO and back in just under an hour with any of the groundbreaking CAO world blends. Test the boundaries of style with new age brands in the 95 rated flathead. Honor the past with new classics like Pilon. Treat your palate to an array of flavors with Soul Fire and Moon Trance. At CAO, the experiences are limitless. So what's your next move? Hey, Paul, what's up? What's up, Mark? I, did you hear about the new cigar that's coming out? Which one is that? There's like 800 new ones every week. The one with the Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper. Oh, really? I love Connecticut Broadleaf. Which, uh, who makes it? Um, I think it's Nicaraguan. So Nicaraguan binder and filler, or it's made in a factory in Nicaragua? Uh, I always have to Google these, and it's taking me like an hour to find out what it is. If this is a frequent conversation with your cigar buddies, look no further than Stogie Geeks News, the only cigar news podcast on the internet. Will Cooper, the man behind Cigar-Coop.com, and Paul Asadorian from the Stogie Geeks produce a weekly show covering the latest cigar news, new blends, cigar manufacturer announcements, and more. Subscribe to the video version on YouTube or get the audio version in your favorite podcast catcher. Head on over to stogienews.tv to subscribe today. Welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 210 for this Monday, November 21st, 2016. Will Cooper with Stace Berkland here in Studio C in North Carolina. Mark Riley and Tyler manning the controls at the Builder North America Studios in Rhode Island. Give these guys a shout out. They're the best in the business. They keep our production going real smooth. So we're very fortunate to have these guys. Um, Paul actually is uh, under the weather tonight. We were hoping to have his big triumphant return here, uh, but uh, want him okay for Turkey Day as well so he can smoke on Thanksgiving. So um, this is our Stogies in a Week segment. It's the foundation of Stogie Geeks, 210 episode stage. I think 208 or 209 episodes we've done a Stogie in a Week segment. So mm-hmm. we've been doing this a long time. I happen to know Stace for about eight or nine years right now when I moved to Charlotte. Uh, and he has just become my consigliere in terms of smoking. You know, Stogie Sand is that other consigliere in Rhode Island. Uh, the funny thing is about this is this is the first time Stace and I are doing Stogies in a Week in a, in a formal setting. I think we've done Stogies in a Week for eight years on a regular basis, just getting together, talking, comparing notes, learning about the different cigars that we've smoked. And, I, and I'm really, really glad to have you here tonight. And I'm glad you brought me here. You know, one of the things that, that I always like uh, telling people, you know, you're the famous guy, right? You, you have a palate, people people recognize it. And it's like, well, Coop and I, we probably agree 85% of the time and we're aligned, but the 15% that we don't Coop, we, we're like fire and water. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so funny. And, and it will be very, it's similar to Paul, actually. We're in the same boat. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, I was hoping to with Paul, because uh, dabbing up here to snake is something that we, we have, dis- Paul and I have disagreed vehemently on it, but you and I are in sync with that one. Um, you know, an interesting thing is, I thought it was really, so Stace comes in here, and he fires up uh, a Don Carlos Private Reserve Robusta. 
which is what you're smoking. Yep. And, and for folks who listen to Stogie Geeks, one day was was a brand is a brand that really comes from the heritage of Stogie Geeks before I joined the show. Um, I've kind of learned a lot about one day from this, but this cigar you're smoking, Steve, um, in my opinion, they came out with that blend along the two Don Carlos blends with that Robusto and the Eye of the Shark. Yep. To me, this Robusto stood out big time. What do you, you know, Tell me a little about what you think of that cigar. So uh, I'll be honest, this is only about the third or fourth uh, personal reserve that I've smoked, um, and I wanted to smoke it again on the show tonight. It, it, it is, it's an amazing Fuente cigar. I, I love it. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the, the Añejos. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, the FFOX. I'm a big fan of the Boy Forbidden City, uh, which is a really, really nice tour. This is, is nothing like any of those. It, it stands apart, and that's one of the things that I think Fuente does very well, um, is that they can create a blend that stands on its own and is unique to itself. And in my opinion, this personal reserve Robusto, it doesn't taste like any other Fuente. I, I agree. It, it is it is really, really nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I completely agree with that. In fact, if Paul and I, are, we've all been pretty much in sync with that cigar. I mean, it, it comes out, you don't know when they're going to release it. Fuente, uh, great family, great company. Media-wise, they're the most frustrating company to deal with because they're so unpredictable. You want the unpredictability. You don't see that from a bigger company at Fuente, but they do. And when these come out, um, I usually go and grab some. I know you always, Stace works at uh, Tinderbox in Charlotte here. Charlotte, Charlotte. Um, and I know he kind of pings me right away, hey, the, the, when the Fuente order comes in. Um, so I'm, I'm real appreciative of that. It's it's not a, uh, overly complex. It doesn't change. It doesn't have three or four nuances. Um, but what you get is solid flavor uh, from front to back. And for people who... Uh, get frustrated by a stick that changes an inch and a half in and changes again at the three inch mark or something like that. Uh, this stick's not that. It's just quality from start to finish. No, no. And I, I, you know, and I, we, we do sometimes get, I know I get caught up a lot of times with complexity. Uh, but complexity doesn't necessarily mean it has to do these radical flavor transitions. You right. can put this and as the smoke's in your mouth, you pick up those nuances and that's still a complex cigar. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm smoking, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, when, we, when we do the Rocky Patel interview in the next segment. I'm smoking the Rocky Patel Special Edition, uh, a brick and mortar exclusive. It only went to select retailers um, around the country, and there's not much known about this blend other than it's a Habano. I think Rocky talked a little about it in the interview, yeah. but um, this is a box press and. There is a sweetness that I get off this this special uh, this special edition. I've only smoked the Robusto. I yeah, I'm smoking the, the Toro. I gave you another. I should have gave you the Toro, but um, I could give you a Toro. I think I have another Toro somewhere. But I mean, we were the night we interviewed Rocky, which was probably about three or four weeks ago yeah, at old Mecklenburg Brewery. At old Mecklenburg Brewery. Yep. Uh, and and that was just a fantastic. You, you'll see, it was just a fantastic interview. Um, we'll we'll talk more about the Rocky interview, but. This, they launched this in Charlotte that night, um, and what it was, it's 10-count boxes priced so affordably. Um, I mean, the price, the 10-count box is like 90 to 100 bucks. Yeah, it was like 90 $93 for yeah. these sticks. Yeah, and they gave, and in fact, Tinder box is really great. You know, you buy a ticket, you get two, you get a beer, and, and they gave you two or three cigars. I forget what it was, but you get more than your money. And this was one of the cigars, they, you know, and I can tell you people, Went up and bought this cigar that night. Yeah, yeah. they went and bought boxes. Yeah, they did. yeah. Rocky. I mean, there's a there's a like an interesting blackberry sweetness I get off this thing, which is real. It's really again, it's not a cigar that's going to change up a lot, but but as you're smoking it, you'll get some really really good flavor. And I'd encourage if you're not a Rocky Patel fan, give this. I, I would say give this cigar a try. Um, you'll be real surprised. Yeah. Uh, so they also gave us the, uh, the the Rocky 55th. Yep. And uh, they didn't have it out then, but it came in shortly after. It was the, uh, the, the the dark Dominican. Yep. Yep. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, what we do is we're going to Stacey and I are going to go through what we've been smoking. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be. Over, I know you had some cigars. Right? It doesn't have to be over a week, but you know, we Stacey and I certainly smoke our, our share of cigars. Um, I'm going to kick it off with, um, and this is a cigar you haven't smoked, I don't believe. Um, 
but I know it's available in the Charlotte area now. Um, it's a cigar by Phil Zengi, an Indian motorcycle cigar, and it's called the Indian Motorcycle Maduro Churchill. And this is a Connecticut broadleaf offering by Phil Zengi. Um, it has a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, a Dominican San Vicente binder. It's using Dominican and Nicaraguan fillers. It says some of that Poloto Cabano, right. which is a, I think is kind of the X element in there. This is a, it's kind of, it's a little more in that borderline of double Corona. It's really a seven and a half by 50. So you're kind of looking at a, a longer cigar, a little thicker than a Churchill, I would say. You know, uh, we talk a lot about Phil Zangi cigars on the show. And uh, from that standpoint, it is, um, it's, you know, we, I guess the best way to put it is certain cigars stand out more than others. Uh, the Indian Motorcycle Maduro is a great blend. It's one that kind of, I think, of, of fills Debonair and Debonair Maduro as an Indian Habano, right. Indian Motorcycle Habano. This is the one that gets forgotten about the Maduro. And, and it's a great Connecticut broadly. Um, it is, and again, the, of the sizes, the Churchill's kind of the most forgotten about size. Um, this is a cigar that I got these last year, so they had a year of age on them. What's the price point? On um, the price point eight dollars and seventy cents. Oh, so okay. It, it's a real, it's a high. You know, this cigar is going to smoke like a twelve dollars cigar. Um, and Indian motorcycle, it's kind of a cigar um, that you know, it's not up at the price point of Debonair's, which get into that thirteen to fourteen dollar range, but more more of an affordable cigar. Um, this is a medium strength, medium bodied cigar. Starts out with, I'd say, the first three fifths. It's going to progress up to medium to full. You're going to get, I know you're a Broadleaf guy, you get a lot of those classic Broadleaf flavors you're going to get in there. You're going to get uh, those mocha notes. You get, there's a nice creamy texture on this cigar, which I didn't get it a year ago, mm -hmm. but it, it, I was really surprised how this cigar smoothed out over it a year. Treated it well. it treat, age treated it really well. We always talk about on the show going back and looking at age on a cigar. Because sometimes we've smoked cigars, and you and I have talked many times, it doesn't really fit. Um, Overall, this is a great cigar at the eight dollars and seventy price point. Again, Debonair, they're a sponsor of ours, but you know, I, I, I've always said to people, smoke the cigars, give us your opinion. I've given this a box worthy cigar. It's an excellent cigar. Uh, I don't have the the rankings or assessments. You don't have to. You know, you don't have Chuck to, no. Norris and no, you don't have to. You don't have to. We we didn't. We usually with a guest host don't don't put that okay, on. Great. We just want to talk about the smoke. I don't thing. think I can handle the pressure. No, no. Um, uh, a smoke that I uh, was really into last year um, is the first stick that I'm going to talk about now. It's not last year's version. It's this year's version. Uh, Pete Johnson has, has done something for TAA a number of years. And uh, 2011, 2012, uh, that blend was a, a tweak variation of pork tenderloin, yep. uh, uh, Barclay Rex, uh, yep. the, those blends. Um, and then 2000. 13, he came in with the uh, the, the 10th anniversary the version, song, right? Yeah. Uh, which was a little bit too big for me. I'm, I'm more of a small yeah. age guy, right? Yeah. You know that. Um, 2015, I felt like he hit a home run. Oh my goodness, uh, that was the best one. It, it, it went back to the 2011 blend. Yep. It was the 5 and 5 8 by 54, yep. slight box press. Uh, that cigar was so, so good that I was chomping at the bit for the 2016 to hit. Um, and when we saw the 2016 come out, uh, he went back to the 2012, which is the, that's the one I'm talking about. It's the 2016 TAA. It's a six and a quarter by 50, um, mm -hmm. a little thinner. Uh, and I figured that I would be jumping all over that. Uh, you know, it's CBL as well, right? Connecticut Broadleaf. Um, has really good flavors. Uh, standard uh, bittersweet espresso, cocoa, earth. Your standard steaks. It's not overly complex in terms of changing uh, what you get at the beginning is about what you get at the end. Um, but what I really liked about the cigar was just the quality. It's like 15 and 16 have gone back to what I think the 11 and 12s were. Now, I will say that I've smoked about four or five of the 2016s. Um, and while I typically like a smaller ring gauge, I'm going to admit the 5 and 5 eighths by 54. I prefer that over the six and a quarter by 50. And I don't know if it's just the age thing. You know, I'm going to have to hold a couple of the 16s and smoke them, you know, later on, uh, maybe smoke them next year. But 
it is a good stick. And, uh, you know, there are about 65 TAA retailers across the country. So if your local shop doesn't have it, you know, you can call up one of the TAA shops. It's, it's definitely a really good stick. Uh, they price point at $11, uh, but this year it's $12, so the TAA went up by a buck. It's a $12 stick, but it's a really good smoke. Now, Craig Cassie, the friend of the show, does he have the cigars still? He absolutely does. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, you're, 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 so that's great. Folks are look, still looking for that. You're, you're, you work in retail a long time. You have a long history there. Yep. Is this the most successful TA cigar to date, you think, at this line? The line, uh, I would say easily. The, the 15, the 11 and 12 are iconic. The line as a whole, from right. 2011 to 16. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't think there's, I don't think there's a TAA that could come close to it in the line. I mean, 2011, was epic proportion. 2012, another epic proportion. And then you get, you know, the geeks, I guess we debate whether 11 was better than 12 or, or whatnot. It doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, I would say easily. I can't think of a TAA that would even come close in the line. When, when I smoked the 11, I thought it was good. I wasn't wowed by it. Okay. Um, the 12, this is where we disagree. This yeah. is where we disagree. The, the 12, I liked that. But when that 15 came out, Last year, yeah. that was by far that was what we call the bell of the ball. That release, it was, that was the that was the epic of that. Um, and I, I agree with that. Now I have not smoked my 16s yet. I have them sitting in the humidor. Yeah. I haven't. Uh, I, it's just I haven't. I'm going to be doing a, a series of a TAA beginning in December for Cigar Coop. So I'm going to be going through uh, through all those right now. Okay. But um, you know, I'll kind of since the 16 is kind of a redo of the. 12. Gun to your head, would you go with 16 or 12? Uh, right now, 12, easy. Um, I, I like the 15 right. better than the 16. Right. I, just, I told you right. that. And, and you're right, the 15 was, uh, it was probably my favorite stick of the year. The TAA Tatawahe 2015, if I were still doing my, my reviews uh, and I were still doing my rankings, uh, it, that would have been up there, number one or number two, wow. in 2015. It was that good. Wow. I, I mean, I agree. It was definitely, to me, that was, when that 15 came out, it, uh, to me, it just took a, taking it the took third, a while to mature. Yeah, taking the 13 out, which was a different cigar, that 15 was the best one I had, uh, followed by the 12. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would definitely agree with it. Um, I don't, I, folks ask me, what is the future of the TAA? I don't know, other than I'm hearing buzz that there will be a 17 series. I don't know if that's why the part of that. I do know that certain companies have already put 17 cigars in the market, and there's a plan for a release next year of TAA cigars with FDA. I can't say how many, I can't say who, but I do know. I, I, can't, I do know who, but I'd be getting, I'd get in big trouble. But I do know for folks, I can say there will be a 17 series out there. Well, if if. If the number of authorized TAA dealers is any indication, right? I mean, a couple of years ago there were 45 or 50 TAA retailers. I believe Craig told me in the they're in the 65 to 68 range now. So they're adding there are more people than there were you know a couple of years ago in terms of TAA authorized retailers. So no, absolutely, it's absolutely. growing. So I would I would think that people would still want to offer for absolutely absolutely. I'm going to switch gears a little. Um, and I'm going to talk about a cigar that, in my opinion, and I haven't even told Stace this yet, but I did give him the cigar tonight. Um, this is a cigar that could be contending for a number a number one, but definitely, I'd say, in the top five right now in my book. It's called the Aladino. Uh, and it's in the Elegante, a Lancero size. Now... Yeah, the Aligante is a authentic Corojo Puro. It's Carole. made by Christian Aroa's yep. father, yep. Julio. Yep. Um, the cigar, a little background on this cigar. It came out actually in 2015. Uh, it, was being, it, was a, it was a soft launch done by CLE Cigars, which is Christian Aroa's company. Earlier this year, they made a decision to take um, the blends done by Christian's father, which is Aladino, Rancho Luna, and Tatastan, and they formed a separate company for distribution called JR, run by Husto and Roll. They were right next to Saka's booth at uh, Shows Festival. Yep, yep, and they were, they were busy. Yep. You, you saw it. Yep. Um, 
episode 185, we had an interview with Gusto. Uh, you saw our reaction when we smoked that cigar. Now, what they did, they actually tweaked the blend a little since that show. And they went with a higher priming wrapper. And this cigar, it's, a, it's in 12 sizes. So there's, most of the sizes are under 50 ring gauge, which is in your sweet spot. Yep. Uh, but they do have a 60, they have a, a 6x60, they have a couple of uh, 6x50 Toro and a, a 5x50 Rebuto. But everything else is under a 50 ring gauge. This Elegante, I, it is just a home run is all I can say. Uh, this cigar, it, it, it really fired on all cylinders. Now, these cigars, they're milder cigars, all right? They're, they're, they have a little more of an old school feel to them, but if you really want to get that authentic Corojo taste on this cigar, this is going to be really one that you're going to get on it. There's a great sweetness off this cigar, but there's very much of a tobacco taste to this cigar. Um, the priming change, I felt, gave it a little more oomph. It took it up to a medium level in terms of strength and body. Um, you know, they say, what are some of the things you're going to look at? You're going to get some of that natural tobacco sweetness. You get maybe a little caramel and a fruit note in there. Um, what I like about this, and, and we, Paul and I have talked about this. I don't know if we've talked about this, but a lot of times Honduran cigars have a drying effect on the palate. Yeah. This, one, one, absolutely. Uh, this one does not. Um, overall, it, it's a cigar. It's priced at about $8, so it's not a, a, a very uh, unreasonably priced cigar. It's at Chuck Norris level, it's close to Oasis Stakes. Wow. It's, wow. It's, it's, it's in the Lancero? In the Lancero. Now, I've had a couple. I've had Does it burn hot. hot? Some Lanceros burn no, hot. No, it doesn't burn hot. That's what's so great about this cigar. And it okay. draws like a dream. Yeah. So it's not going to, you know, you're not going to, it's got just the right amount of resistance on this thing. Now, I know you are a Corona Gorda guy. Yep. Um, they have a size called the Casador, a 6x46. Which I have, I didn't review it for tonight, but I would say that Casador and that Elegante are the two top ones. I've had about four or five of the sizes right now. I haven't had those 50 ring gauge sizes yet. Yeah. Um, but folks need to check this cigar out. And I know that they are a sponsor of the show, I'll say, but uh, Aladino Cigar, uh, Aladino Elegante by JRE Tobacco. This is a cigar to watch into 2017 right now, for sure. Interesting. And you weren't really big on Lanceros. And so that's why I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it's interesting. interesting because I think this year, the, I don't know if it's my palate changing, but this has been the best year of Lanceros in my smoking career. Okay. Uh, Crux the Connoisseur yep. is in there. Oh, Crux Connoisseur is great. Yeah, I sort of call Lancero. I mean, there's a lot of good Lanceros that came out this year. Okay. So it could be me. You know, I used to say I didn't like Mexican tobacco, and now <laughs> I'm, 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 you know, I'm giving them top three ratings a couple of years ago. So. Uh, you know, I think we have all the arguments from I think you and I, I think I've seen you say I'm never smoking that brand again. And oh, it's a great cigar, Will. <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. Yeah, exactly. All right, so my other stick uh, is um, I know that there are people out there. Um, Lanceros is one of those things where you love it or hate it, right? Uh, there's no really in between. You either love a Lancero or you don't. Um, I think the same thing could be said for Candelas, right? People are like, uh, I love Candelas, or I can't stand them, uh, you know, with too much of a grassy note or whatever, right? Um, you and I have had this conversation before. I wanted to have it on the air because I think it's a worthy yeah. one. Uh, there are some Candelas, in my opinion, that stand out that are light years above the entire race uh, in terms of people who produce Candelas, right? right? There, there's the Candela people, and then there are two, three people who, in my opinion, their Candelas are just light years ahead of everybody else. And the Candela that uh, I've spoken of, at least for the past two and a half or three years, is the the, the one that's Skip made by Skip Martin and, and, oh. and, and the folks at Romacraft. Uh, it's it's the Romacraft Cro-Magnon Fomorian. Uh, they basically took the EMH blend. 5x56. 5x56 and tweaked it. Um, they took the Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper and they did a candela on that wrapper and they put that around uh, the EMH blend. I don't know how much they tweaked it uh, for this particular line, but that cigar is a candela that has, in my opinion, zero grass. 
Um, I'm not a big fan of the grassy notes that I get in some of the other Candelas. I'm not going to diss the other makers, but you guys know if you pick up a Candela and you smoke it, you taste the grass. This is not there. It's it's a complex, medium stick. It's not light. It's not early in the morning. It's it's a really good cigar. It's got some meat to it, and just the quality of construction and the flavor. Uh, I, I just think that. Uh, Romacraft hit it out of the park with that PMH Camorian. I'm going to totally, this is what we agree on. Um, what Skip's done with that Candela, and he released it, I want to say it's about three years ago when it first came out. 2013. Um, um, for their, uh, the tweet up up in the DC. DC, right? it, it was, was a very limited tweet up, right? Since then, it started to make its way in limited fashion to some of his key accounts. Yep. Um, He's released a couple of 10 count boxes where you get two of this, two of that, two of this, two of that. Yep. And it was released in there too. He's been on the show and he's talked about he hasn't been able to get that to work really. And he, if he's listening or will listen to replay, he'll probably correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe he said that really he couldn't get it to work anything else but with that EMA. And it was a mistake, right? It was some. He had a mistake with some. It was really some wrap, wrong wrap or so, yeah. Yeah, it was something either the wrong wrap or it wasn't a, up to what his quality is normally, which is he's got some high standards. And it, it, it was a game changing cigar with Candela. Yeah. There's no question. I mean, Dion with the, you know, Dion. 888. The 888 I know yeah. Paul loves the 888. Paul. Yeah, that's Churchill's his, money. When, when, when Paul's second son was born, I think it was Dean. Paul, I hope I got that one right. He, that was just, it was right around St. Patrick's Day, and that's the cigar he gave out. And I think Dion did some great things with that. But what Skip did with that, and then I'll say with pickle juice and wasabi, I don't think you smoked. You I might smoke pickle juice. Wasabi is a little different. With pickle juice was money. That, that was, was a my, great yeah, cigar. Moira was, wasabi's going to be back a little more like old school. Okay. In terms of that, going to have more of that grassy feel, yeah. but it's got some, it's got some spice. And it balances out that grass is really what I found with it. And it's a box press candle, nice. which uh, you don't see that often. Right. So, yeah, I, I would, I'll definitely agree with you on that one, Stace. Um, the Fomorian is uh, the Cameroon binder and the all nickel fillers just complement that that wrapper. Good. Yeah. No, I totally, I totally agree with that one as well. Totally agree with that one. What else you got? Okay. Um, this is another cigar that's in your uh, care packing. Okay. Um, this is the Viaje Furiosa. Um, so the Viaje Furiosa is, uh, it looks like a white label project release, yeah. but it's not. Okay. Um, the only reason why they have Viaje white label on it is because they couldn't get the, the banding done in time. And he, Andre was under pressure. He was on the show when he talked about this cigar. And... Um, he had to get this out for FDA. Mm -hmm. um, what this cigar is, is it's got that cap similar to the uh, face. Kind of that okay. that bump. Yep. And the cigar with um, pizza, pizza Black Label uh, Corona Gorda has that same. Right. It, it, yeah, the difference is this is a wide, it's going to be wider yep. So than both of those six are. Yep. This one's actually a, um, it's a five and three quarter by 52. So it, it's a little bit of a, it's a Nicaraguan Puro, uh, made in Honduras. So he's still working with races. Andre's worked out, now he's working with factories in, you know, the DR, with yeah. Abe, and Casa Fernandez, also at Topsa. Um, Corojo or Criollo? Wrapper? It's a Corojo wrapper, 99. Okay. Um, it's, what I'll say is this, you know, this wasn't a bad cigar. Um, it, it, it's got, it's got, it's in a medium, to, it's solid medium to full. So it's, it's more than a medium, but not quite a full. It's in, it's in that solid medium to full. Okay. Um, it's it's, it's a, a lot of ways, it's a classic Nicaraguan Puro, is the best way to put it. Um, it's got a little bit of that artisan look with it, which I think once he puts the new band on it. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of those earthy notes, some of those cedar notes in there. By the way, Furiosa, do you know what the name came from? Mm -hmm. Something the Furious. Yeah, it was actually a character in a, in a Mad Max movie. That he named the cigar after. Okay. Andre's a big Mad Max fan. Uh, yeah. Um, That's not the guy that had the. the it was actually a woman. It was actually a woman. Was it? Okay. And it was from the new Mad Max movie. Got it. Um, which I did not. I have not seen the new Mad Max movie. Uh, but um, 
It is, uh, I guess, Charlie's Huron played this character. Okay. And it's the Mad Max Fury Road. Okay. I give this a, a, a fiver, which on our scale, we're still telling you to buy multiples of it. Yeah. You know, I, I would say, are there better cigars that Andre has done? Absolutely. Uh, I think this is a cigar that's got some significant aging potential with it. So it certainly it could go up a little more. But, you know, if you, if you see this cigar around, I'm curious, maybe when you're back next week, if you smoke it, you don't have to, but we'll get some thoughts on that as well. I haven't seen a lot of reviews on this cigar. It was a very limited, it was a much more limited release than normal with Andre. Okay. So that's the Furiosa. You have another cigar? Uh, I have a couple. I have two more. Yep, I got two um, more as well. So, okay. Perfect. So, um, when people think Davidoff, um, a lot of people think uh, mild, morning smokes uh, with coffee, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, if you haven't really smoked a lot of Davidoffs, there's an awful lot more in their line. Uh, you, know, you step outside of the white label and you can move over. They've got a Millennium blend, which is really, really nice. They have a Nicaraguan blend, which uh, was very good, I thought. Uh, they've, they've got uh, the Escurio, which didn't really hit my palate, but it was another medium, medium plus stick that, that people like. Um, the one that I found myself smoking a lot, uh, more than any of the other Davidoffs uh, since I started working for Craig in the box, um, is the Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill. Churchill. Yes, the oh, Winston oh. Churchill. No, the Winston Churchill line. Okay. But the Winston Churchill Churchill shape that seven by uh 48 is just in my opinion it's 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 the perfect medium plus cigar for my palate it's complex it's rich it is uh well like i said i've smoked more of them than any davidoff that, that i've smoked and it's just it really fits my palate i like it a lot I don't know how many of those you've smoked. I'm not sure if you're a big fan of the Churchill. No, actually I am, and I know you've recently given me a Churchill, which I have smoked in the Churchill side, which is the Churchill, Churchill side. Um, look, Davidoff, what a job they did redefining that. Winston Churchill yep. was a stagnant brand. Yep. It was a okay cigar from the price point. I'm not going to say it was. No, um, it's up there. It's 18.50 for the Churchill, Churchill. Uh, it's uh, 15.80, I think, for the Toro. Uh, no, 17 for the Toro, 15 something for the Ruby Stone, and then they've got a Petite Corona that's I think 11 or 13. Yep, yep. And they came out with the, I don't know if you ever smoked the Ellie, the, the limited edition that came out earlier this year. A different blend. Um, I'll go back to the core line with that. I think what they really did with that, um, with that, um, and I believe they're using the Rohiza wrapper on that thing, but. Um, I believe they knocked, I mean, they, they resurrected a brand, and now it's under the DAP. It's kind of a Davidoff Winston Churchill, which means you got to go to your Davidoff point of merchant to get it. Right, right. Um, but they, I mean, they just, Hans Christian Hosgard, who, who I interviewed at the trade show, said that became their number one selling line. Really? Yeah. I mean, so that doesn't surprise me. It's a, I don't want, I think using the word worse the first, but they, 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 they want a turnaround here. Yeah. With that, um, now the Winston Churchill was kind of missing, uh, and you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and it is smokes. It smokes like, and it, you know, look that we're not. It's a pricey cigar. Okay, I'm yeah, gonna talk I about one a little more pricey. My, my pocketbook doesn't allow me. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna smoke one a little more pricier, than yours, but there's a difference with that. You know, so that one, but it's a good special occasion cigar. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a good cigar. I found you can smoke any time of day. Paul really likes the Winston Churchill as well. Awesome. Yeah. What else you got for me? Um, so, I smoked uh, a cigar that um, I, I'm going to kind of cage it by saying it was a fantastic cigar, okay? But it's a very different cigar in the Davidoff portfolio in terms of how it's positioned. Okay. It's the Davidoff Royal Release Robusto. It is, um, so... I don't even think we have that. I don't think you may have it either. Um, so, uh, now, and I... I can kind of explain why, I, and I don't want to say if they have it or not, but this is a, so this is, when you want to talk about Davidoff Ultra Premium, this is Ultra Premium. Okay. So a couple years ago, Davidoff had the Royal Salamones and the Royal Robustos. Yep. They went for like $35 for that Robusto and $55 for the Royal Salamones, which is the higher end cigar. Well, they built this other line. Those were limited. This is a more of a, I want to say semi-regular release. Okay. Um, called the Royal Release. 
price that the Robusto, which I'm going to talk about, is priced at eighty dollars, and the Royal Salomonis is priced at a hundred dollars. So, but, so what I'm saying, there's a re- okay. This Davidoff is not putting these cigars out for you and I to enjoy as regular everyday smokes. Right? This is their equivalent of a Dom Perignon. Yeah, you don't go buying Dom Perignon and you don't. That's a special occasion kind of thing. You don't drink that when you come in the house mowing the lawn. Right. <laughs> right. Um, now, I, I talk, well, we talked about the Padron 50th Anniversary Hammers, which is a great, great cigar. Great cigar. They, I paid $106 for that cigar. And I'm going to be honest, the retailers were kind of gouging us a little bit. Because they were factoring in the price of the humidor. Yep. And if you take took out the price of the humidor, it's about a $40 cigar, which is still no cheap cigar. Which is what we're selling Right, it's for right. The, the natural and the Navarro. This is eighty dollars for a single cigar. Okay. Not how you slice it. Better stand up pretty well. Um, it's great cigar. Okay. okay. It is. It is a. It, they're using this wrapper called Aromatic Aromatica Dominicana. It's their own wrapper. They're they're using what they say. They're using some of their best raw materials they have. Okay. Um, and they're using their best talent in the factory. So it's an outstanding. I mean, you're gonna get. It's an outstanding constructed cigar. Um. You know, it's not the most expensive cigar, by the way. The old no, Blanco is at 500 Blanco, cigar, which I have not smoked. Um, but there is, you know, what we do, what I do is, you know, there are certain cigars we do want to talk about from time to time. So if the show you need budget allows it, uh, I'm going to smoke it, right? So um, I smoked it. It, it's, it is hands down one of the best Davidoffs you're ever going to have. It's got um, a little more body than, it's going to be very Davidoff best. Herb, you gotta get that black pepper and Hanky Kellen black pepper, yep. some of that barnyard, some of that herbal spice notes. Great little bit of a toasty note. So it's an enjoyable, enjoyable cigar. Um, it's a medium strength, medium body cigar too. Um, maybe I'd say mild to medium to start out with strength. So it's milder. It's you know it, So somewhere between the white label and say the Asteria? I'd say that's perfect, perfect okay. analogy with that. Is where it's gonna fall. I think if you're a white label smoker and a Millennium smoker, you're going to gravitate to this cigar. If you're an Escurio in Nicaragua, you got to be a little more open-minded. This is not going to smoke like this. Okay. Um, here's the thing. Like, like, if this cigar, if you took if you took price out of the equation, it's a 94-rated cigar. I don't give a lot of 94s out. Um, yeah, that's on a, real high for you. On a value yeah. rating, yeah. it's a try one. I can't go and tell anyone out there Foxworthy dropped 800 bucks on this box of cigars. I, just, so this is where the Stogie Geeks rating is a little different than the numeric. And that's why we have both on Cigar Coop. Okay. So, look, what I'm telling you is, this: if you want to smoke a luxury cigar, it's going to it's gonna deliver. If you're interested in doing that, if you love Davidoff and you want to treat yourself to something, certainly go and try one. Um, it's not better than Year of the Snake, and it's not better than Art Edition 14, in my opinion, yeah. I'd still put those cigars ahead of that. Yeah, Prior of the event. Snake is probably the pinnacle Davidoff for me. Yeah, we we that we're was 2013. Yeah, yeah, one of the one of the best Davidoffs um, ever. And and you know we there's all this this kind of your I think we're gonna put some of these. I thought about it. I decided to throw something else in. Okay, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll you know we'll, at some point we may talk about your rooster. I just got my year at a rooster. I paid forty. Forty dollars for it, and uh, yeah, my which I'm killing the Sogi Geek budget, Paul, um, and he hasn't gotten any of these. It's a nice perfecto. It, 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 it is. Um, you and I have smoked, I think, all of them. Yep. I think she Mo- monkey was probably monkey. the one you and I. Paul liked the monkey. I didn't like the monkey as much. Yeah. I smoked it uh, the monkey when it came out, and um, it had only been sitting on the shelves for a couple of weeks, and. I smoked uh, another one about four months after, yeah. five months after, and, and age definitely treated it well. But it was still, in my opinion, well below years. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Actually, I lied. That was my last one. Do you have one more? I do have one more. Um, and uh, I know that you were talking about uh, the, the cigar that was, you know, if it wasn't the top cigar, it's definitely going to be in top five. At El- Eladino. Yeah. Eladino, yeah. So um, this next cigar, I've only smoked two of because I can't get my hands on more. Um, but I will tell you that when I first smoked it, it was the best cigar I had had all year. And when I smoked the second one after the Cubs won the World Series, 108 years, 
Um, and you didn't jinx him this year, by the way. I, there is yeah. no jinx. <laughs> there, there is, is a no stage jinx, jinx but there is no the, jinx. that jinx is gone now. Yeah, it is gone. <laughs> um, but I smoked it again, and um, it was every bit as good the second time as it was the first time, and I can't wait to see what Ace does to the cigar. Um, Steve Saka obviously came out with his uh, cigar last year, right? came out with Sober Mesa. Sober Mesa. This year he came out with uh, Mike Rita. Um, he also came out with uh, four or five other uh, limited release yep. blends, and uh, one of those limited release blends, uh, he sent a couple boxes out to a couple manufacturers. Uh, Tinderbox was fortunate enough to get a couple of those boxes. It's the uh, Moistra de Saka. Uh, Moistra stands for sample. Uh, Moistra de Saka, uh, the Exclusivo. I think he's got seven different sizes yep. uh, lined up for that. This was the Exclusivo. It's a 6x52 Toro. And uh, yeah, to paraphrase what, what Steve was telling me, uh, he wanted to focus uh, a cigar on the best tobaccos that Nicaragua has to offer. So he took fillers from Condega, he took fillers from Esteli, he took uh, fillers from Jalapa and from Ometepe. And uh, he basically positioned the leaves in such a way that the cigar tells a story. And you're going to remember this, I hope, when Silver Mesa came out. You know, I love small ring gauge, but for me, the Silver Mesa Toro, it was a pinnacle for me. There was a sweet cinnamon slash cedar note right. that was just prevalent in that cigar. And even though the cigar changed, that sweet cinnamon cedar stayed there. And on the retro hail, it really amplified it. Uh, the Moisture de Saka Exclusivo, it has very similar, uh, not I identical, but very similar on uh, the Retro Hill. The very first inch, the first couple puffs up to the first inch, you get that very sweet cinnamon cedar note. And the Retro Hail is just amazing. I can't think of a cigar that has a better Retro Hail. It's just amazing. What changed throughout the cigar was that it kept telling a story. It, it got stronger. It brought in more flavor nuances. Uh, by the time you got through the first half and then you're into the back back half, back third of that cigar, it transitioned from a uh, lighter side of medium to medium to medium plus. By the time I was finishing that cigar, it was full body. There was pepper. There was heavy earth, bitter espresso. It was an amazing cigar, and I was shocked at how it transitioned from start to finish, and I wasn't sure how it would smoke the second or third time. Uh, I only had two sticks, but after the, the Cubs won the World Series, I smoked it again, and it told the exact same story. Though. It, it was, and I don't know if I'm over romanticizing it because I've only smoked two of them, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm open-minded enough to call a spade a spade. Uh, that cigar was just amazing. I cannot wait. I know Saka took orders. I know that he was thinking about a TAA release for the Exclusivo, decided against it. Uh, now the B&Ms are able to order it, and I think they're going to start shipping in March. I cannot wait for the boxes to come in. I will definitely make sure that you and Paul get a box. Okay. Uh, I'm ordering four or five myself. I'll make sure that you guys get that. They come in a box of seven right. coffins. I'll make sure that you guys get a box so that you guys can uh, split the seven. Thank you. However way you want. Well, thank you. Shame on me. Yes. I have one, by the way, that you picked up from me over in Cuba, and I haven't spoken yet. Um, and, it's, and it's good. So I kind of, I actually want to smoke it. You, um, so I got a few. It's, you, you know Steve. I mean, uh, and I know you're very honest with him, and you know you work for him at, at, at IPCBR. So yeah, I know you work. I know you show. always will tell him directly on, on things, but you know the brand. I mean, to me, this brand seemed like his version, and I hate making comparisons, but I'm gonna do it. This is kind of like his Unico series, right? Where he's taking one side, one blend, and matching it with different ones? I, I would say that that's a fair statement. Uh, he's, he's got these lines that it truly is. The blend is for the Vitola. Right? Right. It's not a blend for the line. It's blended. I think he's got a, um, uh, I don't remember the, the acronym, but uh, the, he's, he also released the Lancero in that. Yep. And I know that some of the shops got the Lancero. We didn't get the Lancero. Um, but I, I don't think that the Lancero will be able to keep up with, with what the Toro did. It was just amazing stuff. So. Now, I remember when Tinderbox got those in. Um, I was in Cuba. And I think you, I was leaving for Cuba. You said, you want one? I said, yeah. yeah. But they were gone 
by the time, I, five days later, they were gone. Right? Yep. They yeah, went they, very, they, very, they sold. The, the, the few boxes that we had sold yeah. like in two or three days. Right? Yeah, I mean, so, but Steve, I guess he got all the size, like, he told me he got all the sizes out before the date. Yep. So he can, they're, they're introduced into the market right now. Um, and they're coffins too, right? They're, yep. Seven count boxes yeah. and each cigar is in its own coffin. Well, uh, the Exclusivo was uh, right around $15. I want to say fourteen fifty or $15. Yeah, that's good. I mean, uh, uh, you know, just kind of, we haven't really talked on the air about it. I know you, Mi Carita. I mean, I think Mi Carita is also a contender. It's one of those upper echelon cigars of the year. What, what are your thoughts on Mi Carita? So, I like it a lot. I like the Fino Largo. I like the 6x48 ring gauge. Um, it's uh, It's heavy. Uh, there's a lot of meat to that cigar. Um, I think it's a really good cigar. I think the the cigar geeks in the community are going to love that cigar. For my palate, personally, it's a great cigar, but I'm probably smoking more Silver Mesa Toros than I am Mickey Rita. But in the Mickey Rita line, he's got four sizes. That 6x48, to me, is the one that tells the best story. I, I'd go back with the two with the two six inches, six by forty eight, and then the Uncle Lago, which is six by fifty two. Yeah, it's it's those two, uh, and they're you know, they're those cigars are just amazing as well. And Paul, it, it, I mean, he knocked that one. I mean, the two his two first releases, and I'm, I'm sure it's moist with the sock is going to be great. Really, really is built up to I think what different cigar Silver Mesa. I think if you expect a Liga Pavada. You were disappointed if you but, but Mika Reed is not legal provided either. No, it's not. It's it's no. not legal. It's provided. his Connecticut broadly full bodied offering. Dank. It, it's yeah. that dank yeah. he calls it. Yeah. Um that but swampy, yeah, that moist earthy. Moist, yeah, uh but but uh yeah, I mean fantastic story. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna take a break. Um we're gonna go into the Rocky Patel interview that we recorded um back a few weeks ago in Charlotte. Uh, Stacey and I are going to be back. We're going to have a little bit of a conversation around that interview. Um, so stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this Rocky Patel interview. It's a good interview. Rocky's got a lot of knowledge. 